Uh, Funky started back in uh, 1972. In conjunction with Funky's 40th anniversary, uh, the Kansas State University Press is, is going to be re reprinting the entire run of Funky. They're, they're going to bring out a volume a year for the next 14 years. If uh, you know, I continue doing the strip and the strip keeps running, they won't catch me. In fact, I hope they don't catch me, actually. <laughs> when Funky started out, there was a, a bunch of teen strips that uh, were getting a little long in tooth. And they had sort of covered the territory of uh, parent-teen conflicts, parents arguing with the kids about the car or the phone or telling them to go clean their room. And I wanted Funky to be anything but that, just to stay away from all that stuff. Uh, they dealt with 2% uh, of the school, the, the football team and the cheerleaders, so I was, I was left with everything else. I kind of went inside to the inner conflict, so I wrote about Les waking up in the morning and uh, feeling sick because he knew, knew he had to go to the gym and climb the rope to the ceiling that day. Or he knew there was going to be somebody who was going to be waiting after school to beat him up. I, I used to go out to my old high school to sketch. I still do. And I just sketch and hang around and just to sort of keep up with things. And, you know, so if I draw a drinking fountain, it looks like a real drinking fountain. And one day I'm looking through my sketchbook and there's this girl in high school who I'd sketched who was pregnant. And I thought, well, you know, if I'm going to uh, deal with reality and deal with things in the moment, I should do this as well. So I wrote this story where a girl in high school became pregnant. And that girl was Lisa. And Les wasn't the father, but he was her best friend and her birthing partner through this whole process. And once he had gone through that, once they had gone through that, it was going to be very difficult to go back and have Les hanging from the gym class rope uh, during the middle of the homecoming dance. So the characters were telling me they were ready to move on. As I've grown, the, the strips could grow and the, the characters could grow up. Les's, you know, trying to get a date in high school was rather simplistic stuff and just surface stuff. But once they grew up, uh, Les and his relationship with, with Lisa was much more nuanced and much more complicated, and I liked writing about those things. And the other thing that complicates life is that things change and things happen to people. I had reached a stage where I was starting to hear about friends, uh, relatives, uh, where someone was dealing with breast cancer. And I took that stuff and kind of internalized it to create sort of an inner landscape that I could draw upon to, to write a story like that. And so I did. Uh, Lisa became diagnosed with breast cancer. But I think it's, it's important to deal with stuff like this. I mean, I think art at its core helps us to uh, share the human experience. And sometimes it provides us with insights. You know, sometimes it, it confirms our worst suspicions. <laughs> but it's, it's a shared experience. And comic strips are uniquely positioned to do that sort of thing because they're there every day in people's lives. And they're just sort of interwoven into the fabric of their lives. And... Uh, I think that that helps that helps you to share that work in, in a much more intimate way. I mean, especially with strips where the characters are aging yeah. and growing older, yeah. each strip then becomes like a breath. You know, it's just like a passing moment. And I think that's nice if you can get even close to that.